Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I am going to uh, be basically laying out what I consider to be a tabletop role-playing game essential. And that essential is risk, injury, and even death of characters, including player characters, is essential in order to be heroic. So my definition of heroic, I, I think is, is fairly universal, is that um, you really are not heroic unless there was some significant challenge that you had to overcome in order to accomplish whatever goal you were looking to do. Uh, and that challenge could be anywhere just from multiple obstacles that were, you know, increasingly daunt, you know, daunting or true risk, true risk of injury and even death. And yet you still pushed through and you still achieved your goal. And, uh, and even if your character does lose their life in that action, the, the accomplishment was worth the cost uh, of having done so. I, I really love this uh, this image here that I found that, you know, it tells a greater story uh, in this character's death than all of the characters who have ever made a cup of coffee in Strixhaven. It tells more of a story of a heroic story through this character's death than all of the adventurers who gathered up the recipe items for an onion soup in the, um, you know, in the uh, whatever Citadel <laughs> it was. Uh, I always forget the name of that thing. Uh, the Radiant Citadel. In this character's death, it tells more of an important story of the tabletop role-playing game uh, hobby as a whole than all of the people out there, you know, cosplaying a character that they don't actually pose any, you know, present them with any kind of a risk or, or anything like that. They're running around, you know, dressed up as tiefling bards or, or whatever. And, you know, that that is their sole interaction with the hobby itself. This character's death represents what is wrong with the movie Honor Among Thieves. Because the Honor Among Thieves movie perpetuates this idea that the story is more important than the challenges that the player characters have to, you know, are, are faced with. The outcome is more important than the journey to get there. And that journey to get there, though, is not any kind of struggle. That journey to get there is pre-described and, and, and set out, laid out, where there's no anticipation that there's any possibility of failure along the way. Um, and and that, that was certainly my takeaway from seeing the movie as well, was that there was no real risk. Um, you knew from, or I knew from scene to scene to scene that no matter what supposed challenge they faced, they were going to overcome it and they were going to overcome it unscathed, undirtied, you know, unsullied, you know, by it at all. And, you know, joke and move on to the next scene. And, and so that is not an essential of the tabletop role-playing game hobby. All right. That is basically pretending that you're a participant in the hobby. Uh, furthermore, I think it's a detriment to the hobby to have this kind of a mindset. You know, as soon as you as a game master or a dungeon master stand up there and say, you know, 
I don't think that player characters should die unless the player gives me permission to allow it to happen. Um, you might as well just continue narrating your railroaded story with very little player agency involved. And just it's just story time. I mean, you're, you're literally not functioning in the hobby. Uh, don't bother buying books. You don't need them to do that. Uh, all you're going to do is sit around with a group of friends and you're going to say, well, this is my character and this is, you know, this is your character and, and we're all going to sit around and chat and have fun and, you know, and, and talk about what our characters are doing and, and automatically accomplishing, you know, and then at the end of the day, we're all going to laugh and say, hey, we, we just told a great story. That's not the tabletop role-playing game hobby. All right. That is something that's story time with friends. And so there's a reason why that there are rules for combat. There's a reason why there are dice attached to combat. And that is because that creates the, um, the variability and, and the potential of risk when you're doing something because no one is going to elect to fail at anything that they're doing as a character. And so that's why you have the dice. The dice are the, the even, you know, um, you know, uncaring arbiter of what occurs. Uh, if your characters are not receiving any kind of injury, um, you know, throughout their, their trials and, and, throughout their their challenges that they're facing then it loses that essence of a heroic fantasy or sci-fi or whatever just heroicism you you can't have it without risk um and then even character death um character deaths are are systematically they're they tend not to occur all that often but there should always be the possibility for it. And, and the fact that if a player character dies to think that, well, this is a, a traumatic thing that, you know, um, I, I, I can't move forward because now my favorite character has just died. That death isn't the end of that character's story. All right. That character is going to be remembered based on what the rest of the table and yourself remember about that character. You're going to talk about that character for weeks or even months. If your campaigns are lasting a legitimate amount of time, you're going to be talking about that character for weeks, months, or possibly even years. All right. I remember my first character death going back to 1980. All right. And that's just something that I will always hold on and, and say, now, did I mourn that? No. It just gave me an opportunity to roll up a new character and then to continue within that campaign. But that first character wasn't forgotten. This dead dwarf on the screen here, he is not going to be forgotten. He's going to be remembered for the way that he died. He's going to be remembered for all of the things that he achieved leading up to that, including some of his failures as well, uh, where they can now laugh about them in hindsight. And his story may even continue beyond this as the rest of the party looks to avenge his death or they go to inform his family and maybe his family now has a need based on the fact that he is no longer alive and now that adventure party is going to move on and take care of something uh, for that family as a way of uh, as a way of repaying the family for the services of this fallen adventurer. All right, for this fallen companion to them. So, if you are contemplating allowing for such things as I need to get the player's permission to kill off their character. 
um, you know, to allow the dice to determine that a character or that character, that player's poor choices to be a true consequence towards the character where the character is severely injured or, or even killed. If you're going to entertain that, um, you're not game mastering, all right? You're, you're not being a, a dungeon master. You're allowing for the players uh, to dictate the narrative that is supposed to unfold naturally, organically, and from a combination of everyone's actions and everyone's, you know, um, everyone's roles that are, you know, the fair arbiter of what the outcomes are. Um, basically, you're inserting into the tabletop role-playing game hobby the concept of equity. In other words, well, this is the outcome that I want to have, and therefore I must have it. Otherwise, you're not a good dungeon master or you're not a good game master. Um, it, 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 it's a poison pill that you're being asked to swallow if this is the kind of mentality that is going to come to your table. Um, and, and the movie, Honor Among Thieves, might actually bring people who have never played the game before to come to your table and have that expectation that their characters will not need healing spells, their characters will not receive injuries, or, or their characters, even if they do die, um, they will immediately be brought back to life again by some, you know, by some item that they have uh, instead of uh, requiring, well, now you have to go on another quest, all right? And it's going to be an equally challenging quest in order to get access to that kind of a healing spell or whatever. So, um, you know, risk, injury, and even death of player characters is essential for tabletop role-playing games. Um, without them, you're not participating in the hobby as it was designed to be. So if you're looking to eliminate hit points, if you're looking to eliminate injuries and death from your from your table, just be advised that you know you're not you're not functioning as a game master or a dungeon master um, at the at the essential level that's required uh, for the particular game that you're running. Uh, because I, I don't know if there are any games written for 13 and above, all right? Uh, we're not talking about kids' games, you know, rated G, below age 10 kind of games. Yeah, of course you're not going to have risk and injury and death in those. We're talking about the very adult game or young adult game, um, mid to high teenagers and above, uh, you know, 21 plus. So we're talking about the games that are designed for uh, people with adult, adult mentalities and um, that are willing to accept that if their character dies, that they will in some way continue that character's story and the memories and everything like that, but they will also simply re-roll a character and integrate that character into the campaign, into the player character group that's already existing, and move on from there. Um, you know, again, I'm not an advocate for adversarial GMing. Um, that's just as flawed as a player coming to the table and having these expectations that go against the essential um, the essential concepts of the tabletop role playing game. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to be an adversarial GM um, unless, of course, you're at a convention and you're running a tournament game. Those are written specifically for that kind of a setting, uh, uh, you know, and, and gameplay. But um, if you're running your own personal campaign, 
right? and you have you know you have players coming to your table uh i i would recommend that you uh you remind them that uh the intent here is for their characters to rise and become heroic and and behave heroically and in order for that to happen they need to take risk they may suffer injuries uh and even death while doing so so um i am going to continue this discussion uh possibly tomorrow night in uh in legion of myths uh chill stream you know friday night chill stream um i'm hoping i will have returned uh tomorrow is my birthday so i'm hoping to have returned from dinner by that time and uh be able to jump in at some time between 9 and 9 30 ish uh eastern time uh, to not only just reiterate what I did here uh, and spoke a little bit about here, but also uh, to see where, you know, Max and any other uh, individuals that come in and, and contribute to that discussion, where that takes me, because someone might come in with an idea that I had not thought of and uh, it might change my view. Um, so I'm certainly open to anyone coming in and if they can give me a, a, a convincing argument as to why I'm wrong, then I welcome it. And you could do that in my comment section as well. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that until tomorrow night. Hopefully, like I said, I'll be on around 9, 9.30, possibly 10, and, um, and jump right in on that discussion. So thanks for joining. I hope you liked this video. And, uh, you know, certainly check around and see some of the other uh, videos that are out there on, on a variety of channels. This seems to be the the topic of the week, all right? Um, and I, I think it's largely spurred by the uh, some of the negative, very rare negative uh, uh, connections to the movie Honor Among Thieves. Um, not very many people have been actually addressing it from a gamer's perspective, uh, I've seen a lot of views where you know people are like, "I'm not a D and D gamer," but this is what I walked away from the movie, which, you know, is I find that's that's okay, but you're you're not part of this hobby, so um, you know whether you like the movie or not is is really irrelevant to how the movie impacts uh, our hobby, and that's that that's the only thing that I'm looking at, uh, and, and it was what I was thinking about when I actually watched the movie. Uh, even though I enjoyed the movie, it was a, it was a fun movie, uh, but, you know, two weeks from now, it'll be not even something in my own memory, and, uh, and that's, you know, basically what it kind of is. It's a it's a one-shot entertainment, all right, good for two hours and 15 minutes, and then you never have to think about it again. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, you're free to disagree and put that in your, you know, chats. Just be, you know, just be, um, just explain what you disagree about. Don't just say, oh, this is stupid. I don't agree with you. Uh, tell me why. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll continue our discussion from there, or you could watch tomorrow night's uh, live stream and see where this conversation goes as well. So as always, thanks for joining. I hope you like this video. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, please feel free to do so. If you hadn't subscribed, please consider subscribing and uh, share this video out there. I know it's a, a lot of buzz. Uh, right now, uh, these last couple of days over this issue. And so I wanted to address it before I uh, step into uh, a discussion lobby uh, over the topic as well. I wanted to lay out some of my ideas uh, ahead of time as well. So have a great rest of your day. It looks like it's a beautiful day here in uh, central New York. And so uh, you know, I'll get to outside sometime, some fresh air. And uh, you all have a great day and upcoming weekend. And I look forward to seeing you at either a convention or on the gaming screen sometime soon. You have a great day.